A few people were a little skeptical about my method for making activated charcoal last week, which is fair enough, of course. And lots of you suggested that I watch Cody's videos on the way he makes his on his channel, Cody's Lab. Of course, I had already watched those. I've been following Cody for years because I like his approach to experimental science. Anyway, I thought I'd conduct a simple experiment of my own to show you the difference between ordinary charcoal and my activated charcoal. I made mine using water on top of very hot charcoal. And that charcoal is at least 500 degrees centigrade. So surely there's no question that steam is made instantaneously. The theory is the steam bursts open the structure of the charcoal, creating microscopic fissures and cavities. And those fissures and cavities are the difference between standard charcoal and activated charcoal. Now, Cody heated his charcoal to a higher temperature than mine and then added steam. And he certainly made excellent activated charcoal, no doubt better than mine. But I would contend that mine is still activated, perhaps not quite as activated as his is, but still a useful product and made with far simpler methods. But am I right? Is mine activated or am I just deluded? Hi. I wish I had a suitable microscope so we could see the structure, but perhaps this experiment will prove something anyway. I took some charcoal from the kiln where it was quenched with water and some from a retort where it had been cooled without water. Now I was going to use the batch that I made last week in the retort that you saw. But actually <laughs> I used all that up barbecuing sausages and burgers for Sandra's big do last week. So I haven't any of that. Sorry about that. But I had lots of other charcoal around because I've been making it for years. So the retort charcoal, I'm calling standard charcoal. And the other one is the activated one. So there's one sort that's been quenched with water and one sort that has been cooled without water. And I left them both in the oven for a couple of days just to dry them out for easier grinding. This time of year, the stove is only warm for some of the day, so it's full of eggshells. Then I ground up both sorts roughly and sieved out the larger particles. And then I found two identical pipes and put a square of muslin over the ends. Of course, Cody has proper test tubes and other lab equipment and good for him, but maybe this will do anyway. Then I added five level okay. spoonfuls of charcoal to each pipe. the activated one Put that there. Put that there. Put 
So I hope I've set up two identical filters, one with one sort of charcoal and one with the other sort. Zoom. Next I need something to filter. Again Cody used clever chemical watsits for his experiments, <laughs> but this is just a small farm in Ireland, so I'm using goose pond water. <laughs> Thanks geese. Mmm, lovely soupy pond water. Well done, Keith. And I put some pond water into the top of each pipe and waited. And put some in there. And then you see what comes out at the bottom. Nothing's coming out at the bottom. Patience, Tim. Both filters worked slowly, though after an early head start, the activated one was overtaken by the standard one. I know activated charcoal is not just a filter material. It works chemically and electrically as well. In fact, Cody dissolved iodine with his, but its ability to filter effectively is a good indicator of its other attributes. After approximately one hour, this is the result. This is what we were filtering. <laughs> and this is what came out through the filters. Very interesting, and I'm glad it worked out because I don't know what I would have done if it hadn't. <laughs> but anyway, it did. Now, I'm not saying that this is the best activated charcoal in the whole wide world, far from it. But I am saying that this is activated, and because of that, it's far better than standard charcoal. After all, activation is not a fixed point. It has to be a range. The more fissures and cavities, the better, but having plenty, is good enough for most applications. Now, the flip side of filtering out all the things living in this pond water is that they are now inside the charcoal or on it. So the charcoal is inoculated with microbes of many sorts. So if this was added now to the soil, then they'd be ready to go, enriching the soil, catching nutrients, resisting droughts, and all the other good things that biochar does for soil. I'm going to repeat this experiment sometime using identical wood chips for both, just in case that made a difference. But in the meantime, I know which one I would rather drink if there was nothing else.